Hello, Hateless Gaming here. Uh, today I want to make a guide on warp drives. Uh, I'm not going to cover the lore side of them because that's a fascinating and amazing topic. But today we're going to cover how the game handles uh, warp drives and how you get into and out of warp. Uh, and um, hopefully this video will help you understand why webs and micro warp drives and afterburners and things affect your uh, warp drives and how you can get out of being bumped, for example. Uh, there's a lot of uh, reasons why this knowledge is useful, and I would encourage new players and veterans to watch this video. So, for warp drives, um, there are really three statistics that matter a lot, and that is your warp speed, which is how fast you, uh, you warp, your inertial modifier, and your alignment time are the ones that really matter the most. The other thing that matters a lot is your actual velocity. Uh, and today I have an Orca uh, because the Orca is a prime example of how things work with uh, aligning and getting into warp. So we have an alignment time of 48 seconds. That means that if I am stationary, like I am in this instance, uh, and I go to warp to a gate, so if I go warp within zero here, it's going to take 45 seconds to get into warp. What happens during this 45 seconds? Your ship begins pointing in the direction that you go. So you see here, I'm kind of flying in the right direction to go. And our ship begins accelerating. Uh, and what needs to happen is this ship needs to reach 75% of its uh, velocity to initiate warp. 75% of 75, I believe is somewhere around 50. So once we get to around 50, 60 meters a second, we will initiate our warp. So our top speed there without this on is 75 meters a second. And then you see once we reach that speed, we'll go ahead and get into warp there. And then you kind of accelerate and go into warp. And then you end up getting to your destination. Once you've initiated warp, you're almost guaranteed to land to where you want to land, uh, where you told your ship to land. There are a couple exceptions, uh, bubbles that will be another guide uh we'll work on bubbles but for high second and navigating from the average gate to gate uh initiating warp is uh, mainly going to be the discussion of this video so we have to get to 75 percent velocity uh there's a couple things that can go wrong um if i were to uh get webbed after getting a really high velocity it would slow me down if i were already moving in one direction so if i was moving in the opposite direction our ship would have to turn around completely. So if I was moving the opposite direction, that alignment time could in theory be longer than 48 seconds. If we're going in the opposite direction, then we have to turn around and go back. This is where uh, prop mods make things more difficult. Uh, however, there are things that can go right. Uh, and in the example that I want to show you guys, which is referred to as the micro warp drive trick, uh, you can get that down to 10 seconds on almost any ship in the game that can fit a micro warp drive. Uh, in our instance, we have a micro warp drive right here. It's a 500 MN. And if we simulate uh, the micro warp drive uh, with the micro warp drive on, oops, no, I don't want to offline. I hit the wrong button. But if we simulate with the micro warp drive on, our alignment time goes from 36 to 48. So that's where we got the 48 from. We aligned in like 36. Uh, but we I have a standard of 36 seconds. But what if I told you that if I do this trick correctly, I'll align in 10 seconds, which is the cycle time of a micro warp drive. So what I do is I, uh, this works as long as the ship is stationary. So anytime you come, you're decloaking off of a gate, anytime uh, you land on a grid and you want to relocate, it does not work when you're already moving. So if your ship is in motion, so like when you undock and you're, you start moving already, the micro warp drive trick won't work. Neither will webbing. And I'll, I'll explain how web alts work uh, as well in this video. Uh, it's, it's another fancy trick. But basically, what we're going to do is I got my insta dock here. We're going to go ahead and warp to location within zero. And then I'm going to tap this and turn this on. And then, but wait, Hateless, your alignment time is 48 seconds. But what happens is our ship accelerates to we're already 75 meters a second. We're going fast enough to go into warp. Once the cycle ends, our ship has accelerated to the speed required, uh, which was 75 meters a second. And as soon as this ends, our top speed goes from 415 down to 75 and we immediately initiate warp. Um, it's a little bit of a trick. 
Uh, there's another thing uh, that we can do, which is uh, referred to as using a web alt. And uh, I'm going to do an edit here, and we will be back with a web alt. So uh, good web alt ships, or ships for web alts, uh, are the uh, rapier is probably the king. Uh, it is a uh, force recon ship, and what it has is, that makes it a really good web alt is the fact that it's got the 60% uh, stasis web of fire optimal range per skill level at max skills. That means that uh, a Federation Navy web uh, will reach out to 56 cold. I believe the maximum range that you can be away from a, uh, uh, a ship when you go through a gate, which is where this is really important. Uh, is about 48 kilometers because uh, regional gates are you can be 12 kilometers off them they're uh, 24 kilometers wide and they can be 12 kilometers off on the other side which adds up to 48 so this guarantees that you will always be able to web whatever you're trying to web uh, in time to or without having to remove or move the ships so that's why this is the ideal ship uh, good alternatives for the poor man uh, are going to be the crore uh, which is a uh, faction frigate. And the reason why the Kroar is really good, I'm trying to find my search menu here, ships. Uh, the reason the Kroar is so good uh, is because it has a stasis web of fire range, uh, just like the uh, rapier. However, it's not 60%, it's 20%. One of these with overheated webs uh, will be able to reach most things. Uh, it'll be able to reach non-regional, it'll be able to web you into warp on non-regional gates. If you're on a regional gate, you're gonna have to approach the gate and get to zero, but you just put a micro warp drive and two webs on it and it ends up doing really well. Uh, so as a poor man, the core is a really good choice. Uh, you can also use Lokis. Daredevils are really good uh, when uh, you want a stronger web. So if you only want to use one web to get in the warp, uh, Daredevils are a good choice uh, for the same reason. Uh, because instead of a stasis web of fire range, they have a stasis, um, stasis web of fire strength. But then you would have to approach uh, the NPC as well. Uh, again, Loki has a web bonus as well. Uh, the Hugin has their web bonus, uh, so does the Belgorn and the Ashimu. However, they're bigger. You want something small and fast to be able to keep up with your hauler. Or, well, it's not hard to keep up with the haulers, but they can't go through the gate for an, an entire minute. And small and fast means if there's trouble, uh, they can also be used as a scout. Uh, the other really good part about the Repair is that uh, it can be fit with a significant buffer. Uh, so we have 30,000 HP when we simulate this thing goes to 64,000 HP. It can cloak and warp at the same time, so it means it's an effective scout. And then if you uh, are using a capital, it could also be the ship that lights the Sino for you, uh, which is incredibly helpful uh, because it's also a Sino ship. So if you're moving capitals around, this thing is literally ideal uh, for basically the entire operation. And that's why I personally have a, a couple of repairs uh, sitting around. Um, but yeah, for poor man crawler, for uh, more advanced users, uh, the repair is a really good choice. And again, it's all about web range. Uh, having the insane web range is really helpful. And then also the ability to cloak or the ability to navigate to the gate is strong. This one has range, so it doesn't need prop mods. And it just has a lot of buffer on it. Alrighty. So if we have a web alt handy, uh, which I happen to, he's in fleet with me right here. Uh, what we can do, rather than using the micro warp drive, is we can get webbed into warp. So since we're not in a corporation together uh, that allows friendly fire, uh, I have to, and we're in high sack, uh, I have to get around that. Uh, one easy way to do that is to duel myself. Uh, and there's a quick, easy way to screw this up, and that's to accidentally accept a duel from, um, from somebody else. So what we do to make sure that we don't accidentally accept a duel request in our hauler or whatever, uh, is that we always, on the, the ship that we're being webbed in, we request the dual invite that way. So pilot invite to dual. So I'm requesting it to the Weber uh, rather than the Weber requesting it to the hauler. That way I can't accidentally engage the wrong thing with the uh, with the Weber. So I'm gonna go ahead and send myself a dual invite uh, on the web alt. It's gonna look like this. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and hit accept. And this will give us, uh, we're, we now have an engagement timer with each other or a limited engagement. And it lasts five minutes. This is an entirely like crazy whole video. Uh, but for the sake of getting into warp with a web, this is kind of what we have to do. Anyways, uh, if we go back to the ship, uh, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and warp to a gate. Uh, all right. 
So we put them both into warp here, or we put them both to the gate. Uh, the web alt's going to immediately move. This is how I do it. Uh, the web alt will immediately move here. And then he will go location. Uh, on the G to alt, we're going location, insta dock warp to zero. And then we go back to the this alt, we lock him up. And then we web it, and it should initiate warp in immediately. And you see there, it just got locked and then webbed right into warp. So, from the hauler's point of view, we're going to go, or we're going to make sure that uh, the web alt has been decloaked. So, web alt is decloaked. He's friendly right there. We can see him on D scan. Or not on D scan, but we can see him right there. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're just going to go location, insta dock, warp to zero. And then the web alt will actually lock us up here. And we're aligning, 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 aligning. Web alt has us locked. We're in warp and we're immediately warped off. Just like that. And that's how a web alt can send a ship directly into warp. How that actually functions uh, is that we start moving immediately and we get up to uh, what is, uh, I believe, 60% uh, minus 60% ends up being about... Uh, the dual web ends up being roughly... I, I can't remember what the percentage is. But it's somewhere around like 20% velocity required. And you get that initial 20% like really quickly. And then as soon as he locks and puts you into warp, you, you're effectively insta warps. And we kind of ended up going backwards there, which is really neat seeing that kind of backflip. It's it's really fun to do it in a freighter and a uh, carrier. Uh, but basically what happens is you accelerate on your base speed. And then as soon as you get webbed, uh, your your top speed gets reduced when you actually get webbed. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, get over here and I'll show you guys our velocities with web. So right now it's seven seventy five meters a second. And it takes two webs to do it correctly. Uh, something with a web bonus like a daredevil uh, would give uh, stronger webs. But what's more important for this is range so that you are never out of web range. Uh, so as I apply my webs here, uh, I, I can't really show this that easily, but it's 75. With one web, our top speed goes to 30. And with two webs, it should go down to 15. Or 14.4. And what that means is we need to be going 75% of 14.4, which is like 11 or 12 meters a second. And then if we take the webs off, uh, getting to 11 or 12 meters a second, uh, without the webs, takes us just a moment here. You see our velocity, once we get to 11, uh, we would then be able to enter warp right, right around here uh, if we got webbed. So now... If it takes too long, and we get up to our top speed uh, before being webbed. So if, if I wait too long, it'll end up uh, taking longer because then our ship will have to slow down. So now we're at 30. Uh, we're still accelerating. We're still accelerating. The ship's kind of slow. I'll just go ahead and turn this on. But let's say that we have the micro warp drive going. And we're aligning. Uh, because we do have uh, warp within zero initiated. Now, if I time this right, we're still accelerating, but if I shut this off and web myself, it's actually... <laughs> I lied. It threw us into warp. Um, but what can happen is if you're going too fast and you're not aligned correctly, uh, it can end up taking you longer to warp because you have to slow down. So it's possible for a web alt to make it longer to get into warp. It's kind of rare for it to uh, end up taking more time, but it can happen. Uh, the other thing that can happen uh, when you get uh, when you go into warp is you can get um, the the thing that can happen is you can get bumped or scrammed or 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 webbed by opponents at the at the wrong time. They they can do things to kind of mess with you. Uh, so you got to be aware of that. Uh, being bumped is a, a thing that can happen. If you get bumped, it's going to take longer. Uh, however, if you're being indefinitely bumped, so say you're flying an orca or a freighter and somebody is sitting there bumping you, uh, they did recently add in a timer. Uh, it's three minutes long. So if something is bumping you consistently, if you align to warp and you get bumped and you're, you're misaligned and you just keep on, the, uh, as long as this bar is up, the uh, warp drive active bar is up, uh, as long as that bar is making progress, uh, you will initiate warp within three minutes. Unfortunately, I don't have a bumping ship and I'm not very good at bumping. Uh, to kind of demonstrate this. Uh, but the three minutes will pass and you will initiate warp. Uh, it will always happen. 
uh, as long as you don't get scrammed. Uh, what they can do is they can scram or disrupt you and then that timer resets because you have to reinitiate warp. Uh, the only other requirement to initiate warp is to have enough capacitor. Uh, there is one skill that helps that. Uh, and if we go to skills and I believe it's in navigational or navigation. Warp drive operation gives you 10% reduction in capacitor need for initi initiating warp. Uh, also other skills that help uh, are mostly in navigation. Uh, but navigation itself gives you a uh, higher subwarp velocity. And then I want to say evasive maneuvering increases your agility, which will uh, decrease warp time. And then spaceship command itself uh, and advanced spaceship command also increase your agility. Uh, so doing those will uh, help you get into warp faster. Uh, there's a couple of modules as well. Uh, so if we go into hardware, we have in the propulsion tab, again, I showed the uh, the micro warp drive, uh, but in propulsion upgrades, we have uh, overdrive injectors will make it take longer because it increases your speed. Uh, inertial stabilizers are the single best thing for increasing your warp speed. However, they also increase your signature radius, making you easier to lock. So that's a factor that you may want to consider. In high sec, I prefer inertial stabilizers. In low sec, I prefer uh, nanofibers. The other thing that helps out a lot uh, or can help out a lot is the um, any rig that increases your agility and any module that increases your agility. Uh, so in hull and armor, we have uh, hull upgrades and nanofiber structures will increase your warp speed. Uh, also things that increase your mass tend to slow you down for, uh, for warp speed. So uh, not reinforced bulkheads, but like armor plates add a lot of mass. So they will slow you down for getting into warp. Uh, in rigs, we have astronautics rigs. Uh, there are three main ones. The auxiliary thrusters give you extra speed. Uh, dynamic field valve, I believe. Uh, that's for prop mods. It is the low friction nozzle, nozzle joints increases a ship's agility. So we have uh, purely agility. So it only gives you a better inertial modifier. Uh, and then there are polycarbonate engine housings, which are effectively the same as um, which are the same as nanofibers. They increase your velocity modifier and your inertial modifier, uh, making you both move faster and align faster. Um, and that is all of the objects that can affect you in making things go into warp. Of course, there's bubbles. Uh, I can't really get into that because bubbles are a bit complicated. I just want a simple video explaining micro warp drive trick and the web trick. Uh, upcoming soon is going to be a hauling video uh, which will flesh out the micro warp drive trick a little bit more using uh, adding a cloak to make it a little bit safer. Uh, and then also which ships are good for uh, which situations uh, for hauling and moving stuff. But understanding how to get into and out of warp is a somewhat helpful bit of knowledge. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe below. Uh, if you have any feedback on it, uh, make sure you add those. I'm always looking to improve and get better. Uh, we are officially on a new schedule, so uh, you guys should be seeing a lot more YouTube comment content coming out in the future. Make sure you guys fly fun, enjoy your time in EVE Online, keep bringing people up, and I will see you guys in the next one.